Even Cert Higher Level Maths 2020, Paper 2. This is the solution video to question 8. So question 8 is our inferential statistics uh, question. Uh, and it goes like this. An airline company, Trans Sky Airways, has designed an aptitude test for people applying for jobs as trainee pilots. The aptitude test is scored out of 500 marks. The results are normally distributed with a mean score of 280 and a standard deviation of 90. The top 25% of people taking the aptitude test are invited back for an interview. Find a minimum mark needed on the test in order to be invited back for interview. So our Z score is given by X, or Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. So to find this, we use Z scores and we go to our Z score tables and we look for 75% on our in our Z tables. Um, so if the top 25% are invited back for an interview, we're looking for the bottom 75% who aren't. So you won't find 75%, but you will find 0 0.7487 uh, or 86, sorry, and you'll find 0 0.7517. So you take halfway in between these. So on your left hand column, you'll have 0 0.6, and on the top, you'll have 0. Uh, 0 0.07 and 0 0.08. So we're going to take halfway between 0 0.07 and 0 0.08. So that will be equal to 0 0.675. So we let our Z score equal to 0 0.675. And then we fill in the rest of what we know. So we know that uh, it's X minus mu. Uh, mu is our 280, our mean uh, 280 divided by sigma, our standard deviation of 90, and that's equal to 0 0.675. And now all we have to do is solve for x. So I can multiply across by 90 to get x minus 280 is equal to 0 0.675. And then x is equal to, um, or, sorry, times the 90, obviously. So then x is equal to uh, 280 plus this, so 280 plus 90 times 0 0.675, 90 times 0 0.675. And that gives us an answer of x is equal to 340.75. And if we were to change that into marks, it doesn't say that it has to be uh, an integer number of marks, but um, I would imagine that that is to be rounded to the nearest whole number. So 341 marks is how many marks are needed. Uh, part two, I uh, anyone who scores above the 40th percentile can resit the test later. Eileen scored 260 marks in the test. Find out whether or not Eileen is eligible to resit the test. So I've seen a few ways to do this um, one here. And until the marking scheme comes out, it'll be difficult to know what exactly they were looking for. But this is um, my take on it anyway. So uh, I started by finding the Z score um, of with this uh, 260 marks. So that'll be 260 minus the mean 280 over the standard deviation 90. And that gives you um, minus 0 0.22. So if we go to our Z tables, that will give us um, Z, our Z score of uh, 0 0.5873. Okay, so um, that's the, the probability of z, uh, plus 0 0.22 because you can't do a minus in the, in the Z tables. So to get the probability then of minus 0 0.22, it's equal to one minus the probability of plus 0 0.22. So that's gonna be equal to one minus 0 0.5873, which is equal to 0 0.4129. And that's 41, 0.29% or the 41 per, uh, 41st percentile. So that is above the 40th percentile. So she is eligible to reset the test. So 
um, we can just say that Eileen is eligible to reset. On to part B then, explain the relevance uh, of the Z scores minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 in the standard D, in the standard normal distribution. So I think the simplest explanation is that 95% of data lies between minus 1.96 and 1.96. You might draw in um, your standard uh, curve there to, to illustrate that better, but I think that would be enough to get the marks. Part two, Trans Sky Airways surveyed 2,500 of its passengers about a new service it proposed to introduce. The variable P hat is the proportion of respondents in the survey who said they would use the new service. The radius of the 95% confidence interval of the survey was 0 0.01568. Find the value of p hat where p hat is between 0 0.5 and 1. So um, the radius, the, 90, uh, the radius of the 95% confidence interval means that we set this up as 0 0.01568 is equal to uh, our standard error, which is 1.96 times uh, p times 1 minus p over n. Okay, so, and then we fill in um, what we know here. We know uh, N, which is 2,500, and then we can solve for, for P. And this formula as well works for P hat as well. We're actually looking for P hat. It's the same formula, whether you're looking for P or for P hat. So I'll start by multiplying um, across, or dividing across rather by 1.96. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 1.96 to get um, 0 0.008 on this side is equal to the square root of p hat uh, minus p hat squared. I suppose I can multiply that out. And then that's over n, which is 2,500. Now I can square both sides. So I'm just going to square both sides like this. Uh, 0 0.008 squared is 0 0.000064 is equal to p hat minus p hat squared over 2,500. Then I can multiply across by 2,500 to get rid of the fraction. And 0 0.000064 by 2,500 is 0 0.16. So that's equal to p hat minus p hat squared. And then we just bring everything to one side to get a quadratic equation so we get p hat minus uh, p hat squared rather minus p hat is equal to uh, sorry plus uh, 0 0.16 is equal to 0 and then I'd just go ahead and use the minus b formula for this so p hat is going to be equal to uh, minus b so that's minus minus 1 is 1 plus and minus the square root of b squared so that's minus 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 0 0.16. And that's all over 2a, uh, which is 1, 2 times 1. So p hat then, uh, simplifying this down, is going to be 1 plus and minus the square root of 9 over 25, uh, all over 2. So you can type that into the calculator. You get two solutions. You get p hat is equal to 4 over 5, and you get p hat is equal to 1 over 5. Now, just checking the question, it says that it has to be between 0 0.5 and 1. So it's this one. We don't accept that one. So p hat is equal to uh, 0 0.8. Part C then, the weight of the airline passengers carry on luggage is normally distributed with a mean of 12 kg. The airline has recently in introduced a fee for non-carry-on luggage. After the fee was introduced, the airline expected the mean weight of carry-on luggage to change. They selected a random sample of 80 passengers and weighed their carry-on luggage. The sample mean uh, was 13.1 kg and the sample standard deviation was 4.5 kg. Test the hypothesis at the 5% le level of significance that the mean weight of the carry-on luggage has changed. 
state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and give uh, con give your conclusion in the context of the of the question so um first of all state the null hypothesis so the null hypothesis h0 is that the mean has uh, not changed so it's equal to 12 kg and the alternative hypo hypothesis then h1 is that the mean has changed and it's not equal to 12 kg so that's just the first two bits there and then to find uh, or to do the the hypothesis test what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our z score for this sample so z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over root n and in this case um x bar is our 13.1 kg uh, mu is our mean that's 12 kg n is 80 that's the sample and sigma was the standard deviation which was 4.5 so we can fill all them in here z is equal to uh, x bar minus mu so that's 13.1 minus 12 over sigma which is 4.5 over root n which is 80 and that should give you a z score of 2.19 and we compare that to 1.96 2.19 is greater than 1.96 1.96 is the z score you get at the five percent level of significance so 2.19 is greater than 1.96 so that means we reject H0 as 2.19 is greater than 1.96 and that means in the context of the question the mean weight has changed. On to part D then, the last part um, to do with the airline. So the company bus um, carries passengers uh, up to a total maximum weight allowance of 3000 kg. The weight of the passengers is normally distributed with a mean of 73 kg and a standard deviation of 12 kg. 40 passengers board the bus find the probability that the total passenger weight will be over the maximum weight allowance and give your answer as a percentage correct to two decimal places. So basically we have 40 passengers and we want to find out uh, the probability that they have an average uh, weight that adds up to more than 3000. So if we do 3000 and divide that by our 40 passengers, we get an average weight of 75 kg. So basically we want to find uh, the probability that um, our 40 passengers have an average weight of 75 kg or or more so to do this we're going to find the probability that our mean is greater than 75 so the probability the probability that our mean is greater than 75 to do that we get our z score um, so it'll be 75 minus our mean uh, which is 73 over uh, sigma over root n so sigma is 12 and root n was 40. so if you put that into your calculator there you get a z score of 1.05 so if we have our z score of 1.05 we want to know what's the probability that this z score um, or that our z score is greater than 1.05 to find that we would find uh, 1 minus the probability that our z score is actually less than 1.05 because the z tables only give us less than they don't give us greater than so we find 1.05 in our z table so it'll be 1 minus if you look up 1.05 you get 0 0.8531 so that's equal to one minus that is 0 0.1469, which is equal to 14.69%. So what that's saying is there's a 14.69% that 
chance that if you have 40 passengers on the bus, then the bus will be overloaded. It'll weigh uh, more than the 3000 kg. The last part of this question then, part E, is the list of eight whole numbers. Um, nothing to do with the other parts of the question. I've already done a video out on the solution to this, so I'm just going to put a link to this right now um, here and also in the description. So you can just click on that if you want to see the, the solution for part E. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.